granted, Joe, he's clearly been in that bed with depression for 20 years, right? <laughs> Do you think that's it? Because he's not that old. So, so you were actually going to give him the benefit of a doubt that he actually has a mental disorder. And not that he's just a scumbag. <laughs> Well, no, that's where I was going with it. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> depression would be a... F- like, I, I would understand he, that. He's his just, daughter... He's a rap bastard. Right. His daughter is working all hours of the night in, like, a laundry. Basically a fucking Magdalene laundry. Right? Yeah. His grandson is doing a newspaper route and giving him money for his tobacco. Oh, and grandson... he's sitting in bed not working? Le- yeah. The he's the reason they're poor. And he's oh, not he that old. He's been the, he's in bed he, 20 years, so he's been in bed since he was probably 40. Exactly. Because he's, he's at most 65. Joe is a scumbag. He's a... I think. Dickhead. Everything. Like, he's... Basically, the impression I got from his character was he worked for Willy Wonka. There was a lot of spies causing Wonka problems. He fired all his staff and Grandpa Joe got into bed at about 42 years of age. And didn't get out of bed again yep. until Charlie won the golden ticket. Yeah. And told him he was bringing him. Can I just point out, maybe he's just a cruel old man. Because you know when he's like, they buy Charlie, the, they all knitted the scarf for his birthday? Yeah. And then... He buys the bar. But Grandpa's like, oh, and this is from all of us. And I was thinking, like, but you don't leave bed, so you couldn't buy that. Also, you have no money. So did the man actually buy that and you're just taking credit for it? Well, clearly... <laughs> So Grandpa Joe, being uh, the scumbag that he is, yeah. Once Charlie gets the ticket, it's all it's just about Grandpa Joe. There's more stuff later on where he just he's only worried about himself. Yeah. But it's that it's once he gets the ticket where Charlie gets a ticket, and all of a sudden Grandpa Joe is up singing, "I've got a golden ticket." Not yeah. even we, just I. So when they're entering the factory, when Wonka comes out, forty-five minutes into the film. And he's really pleasant with everybody as they're coming yeah. in. And everybody's introduced and he shakes hands with the kid and then their parents. Yeah. But then when it comes to Charlie, he, he recognizes Charlie first. He's like, I've read about you in the papers. Yeah. And then he doesn't shake hands with Grandpa. Grandpa is the one that... Tries to initiate it. Yeah, he's the one that initiates it. Yeah. Cause like, so if he was working... Because Willy Wonka would not recognize every employee. Of course so there's not. no reason he'd recognize him. But Grandpa seems really eager. But once they're shaking hands, there is this really... Mo- and of course it's just an accident or whatever. But maybe it's a subtle moment on Gene Wilder's behalf. Where there is a moment where of recognition. Yeah. Where he kind of like just like... His head kind of rolls back a little. like As if he yeah. recognizes Grandpa Joe. There's a little bit of tension there. Yeah. Yeah. This is another thing that just speaks to how much of a scumbag he is. <laughs> when they have to sign the contract, remember? And everybody's like, oh, should we sign that? We don't know what this means. Uh, he's like, go on, sign it, Charlie. He we got li- nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. got not. So he actually says that. So that's not even a theory. He literally says, we've got nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah. So I'd imagine that character takes that, that uh, philosophy on for everything, where they've got nothing to lose. He doesn't give yeah. a shit. Grandpa Joe is also just a bad person in general. <laughs> no, but he is. When they go into... Oh, yes. When they're going through that first door where it's like, oh, how do you get in here, Wonka? You're crazy. And she's like... He's like, I know there's a door around here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And Mike TV's mother is like, somebody's touching me. And he's she just like... She clearly means inappropriately. Yeah, because everybody's touching everybody. No, she means somebody grabs it's her pres- And it's presented like... He's like, oh, sorry. He puts up his hands and he just looks away. Yeah, yeah. So he just, like, took a squeeze while he had... <laughs> He's the guy in a nightclub that every girl I know has told me that, like, just walking through a nightclub, a guy will just walk by and squeeze your ass. Yeah. And I just kind of like, oh, it's the worst. But also, he's he's really sexist in general. <laughs> yeah. Like, he doesn't... When you actually watch him, he doesn't speak to anybody. Bar Wonka and Charlie throughout the whole film. He never speaks to his daughter. No, but he, when, when they're in the factory, or his he, granddaughter. But when whatever, they're in the factory, wife, he, but when is. they're in the factory, he doesn't yeah. speak to anybody else. Imagine going through that tour and not speaking to anybody else. But yeah. he talks about them oh, while they're yeah. there. So somebody will say something, 
And he's like, wow, she's a real bitch. Huh? Yeah, essentially. <laughs> like, that, like, ladies first, that means Veruca. And he's like, well, if she's a lady, I'm a whatever he says. Yeah, yeah. And he just I'm make... a 1970s one reference that people he, of this time will get. He keeps <laughs> making all these snide remarks that he got, and he used the word nitwit a lot. Yeah. But yeah, so he's just like, I know, he's just a really, he's just a slimy person. And it's his idea to drink the lemonade. He makes Charlie steal. He Charlie, makes him do it. Yeah. Charlie could have gotten, like, the whole test of that was to see who fucking steal. Like, the recurrent thing is he tells people not to touch anything. Yeah. And all the all the and liars do. He tries to drink the f- and Charlie isn't, but Charlie is forced into taking the... By the same person. Well, his grandpa's forced... like, why not? Nobody will ever know. Yeah. And... The same person has forced him into everything. And then, like, let's look at the end. Even when... child's labor. It's even like, when they're in the glass elevator in the end. Oh, fucking Grandpa Joe. He's such a scumbag. <laughs> Once, the, when they're in the elevator, and Willy Wonka goes, Charlie, I'm giving it all to you. And what does it? What does Grandpa Joe go? His first thing's like, and what about me? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. He goes, what about me? Straight away. He only cares about himself and he goes your whole family can move in yeah as if grandma joe cares about this like, oh, one, <laughs> there is one really weird line by grandpa joe's that i fucking love when they're talking when augustus when he gets sucked up through the chute oh yeah and they're talking about the pressure building up <laughs> yeah and grandpa joe just says remember once you asked me how a bullet came out of a gun <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's like what? That, that sounds like something you would try. That sounds like something like as you're about to kill somebody, you'd be like, Shane, remember you once asked me how a bullet came from a gun and then I'd cock no, it and shoot No, I didn't. You. I didn't. I never <laughs> asked you that. I never asked you. We never had that conversation. Like, that sounds <laughs> like something that an aging hitman would say to somebody. <laughs> I just like that line. But Grandpa Joe, absolute rat bastard. Scum. 